Hey guys, it's me, Soren, back with another video. Today is day 22 of Hidden Figures, and today's hidden figure is Gwendolyn Brooks. I know a lot of you have probably, possibly heard of Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, so some people might not feel like she's that much of a hidden figure, but I just feel like Gwendolyn Brooks still doesn't really get her flowers uh, as much as she could, so I just wanted to dedicate uh, one of these hidden figures to her, just so that a few more people could learn a little bit more about her and a little bit more about her life. Uh, so Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks, born June 7th, 1917, and died December 3rd, 2000, was an American poet, author, and teacher. She was the author of more than 20 poetry collections and won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry on May 1st, 1950, making her the first Black American to receive a Pulitzer Prize. She was appointed Poet Laureate of Illinois in 1968, and in 1976, she became the first Black American woman inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Gwendolyn Brooks was born on June 7, 1917, in Topeka, Kansas. She was the first child of David Anderson Brooks and Keziah Wims Brooks, her mother had taught at the Topeka School that later became involved in the famous Brown v. Board of Education racial desegregation case. Family lore also stated that Brooks's paternal grandfather had escaped slavery to join the Union forces during the American Civil War. When she was six weeks old, her family moved to Chicago during the Great Migration, and from then on, Chicago remained her home and the setting of her poems. Brooks began writing at an early age, and her mother encouraged her, saying, You are going to be the Lady Paul Lawrence Dunbar. She published her first poem, Eventide, in a children's magazine, American Childhood, when she was 13 years old. By the age of 16, she had already written and published approximately 75 poems. At 17, she started submitting her work to Lights and Shadows, the poetry column of the Chicago Defender, a famous Black American newspaper known for anti-lynching editorials. By the time she had graduated from high school in 1935, she was a regular contributor to the Chicago Defender and had published almost 100 of her poems in the column. Brooks never pursued a four-year college degree because she considered it unnecessary. I am not a scholar, she said. I'm just a writer who loves to write and will always write. Her characters were ordinary people, often drawn from the inner city life that Brooks knew well. She also said, I lived in a small second floor apartment at the corner and I could look first on one side and then the other. There was my material. She graduated in 1936 from a two-year program at Wilson Junior College, now known as Kennedy King College, and worked as a typist to support herself while she pursued her writing career. She published more poems while she attended Wilson Junior College, and in her early years, she received encouragement from James Weldon Johnson, Richard Wright, and Langston Hughes. In 1938, she married Henley Blakely and moved to a kitchenette apartment on Chicago's South Side. By 1941, Brooks was taking part in poetry workshops, including one at the Southside Community Arts Center. Renowned poet Langston Hughes stopped by the workshop and heard her read The Ballad of Pearl May Lee, becoming an even more ardent supporter of her work. In 1944, two of her poems were published in Poetry Magazine's November issue. In the autobiographical information she provided to the magazine, she described her occupation as a housewife. Brooks published her first book of poetry, A Street in Bronzeville, in 1945 with Harper and Brothers after a strong show of support to the publisher from Richard Wright. The book earned instant critical acclaim for its authentic and textured portraits of life in the Chicago neighborhood of Bronzeville, with Brooks receiving her first Guggenheim Fellowship in 1946 and being included as, as one of the 10 Young Women of the Year in Mademoiselle magazine. Brooks' second book of poetry, Annie Allen, published in 1949, focused on the life and experiences of a young Black girl growing into womanhood in Bronzeville. The book was awarded the 1950 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, making her the first Black American to receive a Pulitzer. In 1953, Brooks published her first and only narrative book, a novella titled Maud Martha, which is a series of vignettes that follows the life of a black woman as she moves from childhood to adulthood. 
Maud Martha stood out for its depiction of a complex Black woman coming of age and for its discussion of colorism within the Black American community. In 1967, Brooks attended the second Black Writers Conference at Nashville's Fisk University, where she met activists and artists such as Amiri Baraka and others who exposed her to new Black cultural nationalism and the Black arts movement. Brooks' experience at the conference inspired much of her creative output and career from then on. Becoming one of the more visible spokespersons for the Black aesthetic, she began to refuse major publishing houses in favor of smaller, exclusively Black publishers. Her poems also became less structured. Moving away from an established mainstream, i.e. white, literary format to more improvisational free verse with jazz and Black American vernacular English inspired dialects. In 1968, Brooks was appointed Poet Laureate of Illinois, a role she held until her death in 2000. As laureate, Brooks was active in Illinois communities, developing and organizing poetry workshops and activities in many poor Black areas of the state and in Chicago, where especially the youth had never been exposed to poetry. She began teaching creative writing to members of the Blackstone Rangers, a Chicago street gang affiliated with the Black Power movement, and also in 1968, she published one of her most famous works, In the Mecca, which was a poem about a mother's search for her lost child in a Chicago apartment building. The poem was nominated for the National Book Award for Poetry. In 1976, she became the first Black American woman inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters. She was also named the Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress for the 1985-1986 term. In 1988, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame and in 1994, selected by the National Endowment for the Humanities for the highest award in the humanities given by the federal government. During her long career, Brooks taught at such schools as Columbia College in Chicago, Northeastern Illinois University, Chicago State University, Elmhurst College, Columbia University, and the City College of New York. She also released two autobiographical mixed media projects, Report from Part One, which included reminiscences, interviews, photographs, and vignettes, and came out in 1972, and Report from Part Two, which was published in 1995 when she was almost 80. The rare book and manuscript library of the University of Illinois acquired Brooks's archives from her daughter, Nora Blakely. And in addition, the Bancroft Library at UC Berkeley has a collection of her personal papers, especially from 1950 to 1989. Gwendolyn Brooks died at her Chicago home on December 3rd, 2000, at the age of 83. In 1950, the year that Brooks became the first Black American to win the Pulitzer Prize, her editor asked her what made her write. Brooks stated that she wrote while scrubbing, washing, ironing, cooking, dropping the mop, broom, soap, iron, or carrot grater to write down a line or a word. Writing, she said, is the only work in which I am interested. I really love Gwendolyn Brooks because Gwendolyn Brooks wrote about, you know, quote unquote, regular people and also considered herself to be one as well, which I feel like is something that is very much lacking nowadays in how people and especially artists view themselves. And so I also want to read a little excerpt from her prize winning uh, book, Annie Allen, written for those who are poor, who are judged the least wise of the land, who are my sweetest lepers which was dedicated to the Black Americans and especially those in Chicago. So that is Gwendolyn Brooks, poet, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links and information in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow with another hidden figure. Peace.